In the previous video, I explained to you about deployments. Now, deployments offer high availability as well as, an, you know, it gives you a way to define the strategy to upgrade from one version to another. Second important aspect is publishing the application using services. So when we created this, you know, workload, it started running the application. But in order for me to access that application, I created a load balancer. I had to create a load balancer and that load balances across the number of instances available in this fashion. So you create a service, service is a, gives you a way to create a load balancer and then it you know, balances across the number of available pods. And this is the service that I had created with type as load balancer. There are many types of services that you could possibly create. And if I look at the service configuration or details, it again, it uses uh, the labels and selectors to select the pods to send the traffic to. Uh, service has its internal IP, that is internal to the cluster. It also has an external IP. This is what I'm using outside. So the purpose of the load balancer IP or the external IP, or there are various other ways to expose a service is to expose and make it available from outside versus cluster IP is useful for internal purposes. And if another application wants to connect to this, it also has its own internal domain name. And then service has a configuration, ports configuration, whereas the port 80, port 80 on the service endpoint points to let's say port 8079 on my containers, basically. This is how the services work. So you create a service, when you create a service, this is what happened. Let's say I had three instances of my application, front-end application when I deployed it. And um, instead of, and I, I didn't have a way to connect to this uh, directly. So instead of doing uh, connecting to it directly, we created a service. Service gave us a load balancer internal endpoint and external endpoint as well and service lesson my service lessons on port 80 it has a cluster ip which is internal it also would have a domain name which can be used from for accessing the service from other applications internally using a dns service and dns has already been configured as part of this cluster already and the way i exposed it was using load balancer but there are many options to do that you can expose it using a route, using a domain name, and that's called as ingress controller, or you can use a node port. In fact, when I created the service, it also has created a node port. Uh, you would see that in the configuration for the service itself. Uh, let's say if I look at the details, I see all the configuration. So there's only uh, the load balancer that I see here but it also has a node port defined here. Let's say 31345. This is useful if I want to go and look at any of the nodes. Let's say I have three nodes. I can use each of that nodes external public IP address and then use the port to access it. So instead of load balancer, I can also use the node IP and uh, let's say 3145 fair. This is a load balancer IP. This won't work, but I could do that for the nodes. That is one way of accessing it. So load balancers are only available on in the case of cloud. We're using Google Cloud, so it is easy for us to use that. But if you are using on premises, you'll probably expose it using either a node port or later on using an ingress controller or a domain name such as this. You could also use another option to expose that using external IP. I'm not going to go into details with this course. This is to basically uh, just get a basic idea of Kubernetes and understand it at a very high level. So we uh, to simply put, uh, this is what our path is. So the external load balancer accepts the connection here, and then it passes on to the internal service that that service in, in you know, internally does the load balancing. So whenever I refresh this page, it will go to a next, you know, next pod every time based on the stickiness, etc, etc, right. And that is how you expose the application using the service right there, right. So that's the concept of uh, service uh, here, right. So these, this is the basic, you know, um, primitive of Kubernetes. We talked about deployment. We are talking about service now. And service is useful not only for publishing the application outside, but also if you want to connect one application with another, 
let's say I have an application stack and if I want to connect this to the catalog, when I deploy the catalog, it will also create an internal service. I'll use the internal DNS and connect this application with that using the internal service discovery. I'm going to talk about the service discovery, internal service discovery in another video. But before we do that, it's important to understand how our application got deployed and uh, in the form of pods, what pods are and how do they work. And that's what I'm going to talk about in the next video.